Hello and welcome to today's Aperio webinar. I'm Ian Dolphin, Executive Director of the Aperio Foundation. Aperio is a non-profit membership organization which is dedicated to developing and sustaining open technologies for higher ed. We sponsor 16 software communities that produce a range of software supporting the academic mission, learning, teaching and research. If you want to know more, go to www.aperio.org. The webinar will be recorded and we'll distribute it through the Aperio YouTube channel. Please feel free to ask questions in the chat throughout the webinar. I'll try and copy those out and swing around to answer them at the end of the presentation. So please join me in welcoming Wilma Hodges, Sakai Project Management Committee Community Coordinator, who's going to tell us all about the goodness in Sakai 19. Over to you, Wilma. Thanks, Ian. So um, for those of you who attended the virtual conference last week, um, some of this will be a little bit of a recap from a what's new in 20 um, session that Derek and I did. Uh, but I'm also going to recap some of the new things that are available right now in the current release, which is Sakai 19. So um, if you've not caught either of those presentations, then you kind of get a two for one today. So, <laughs> um, so I'm going to walk through the various features and as Ian mentioned feel free to put questions into the, the chat um, and please ignore my dogs in the background <laughs> hopefully they won't make too much noise all right um, so uh, just a quick summary of Sakai 19. Um, these are the, the release dates. So the, the 19.0 release came out um, in March of this year. And, uh, and then we've had um, subsequent releases, um, you know, a couple months apart, more or less. Um, the latest of which is 19.3, which came out in October of this year. So that's the current release. And, um, and that's the one that probably if you're running 19, you're most most likely on um, 193. Uh, I know for for the long site clients that we support, um, we recommended that folks go ahead and, and go to 19.3 if they're on any version of 19 because there were quite a lot of um, security updates and things in that in that latest release. Um, in total, there are um, nearly 2,000 JIRAs uh, associated with the, the 19 branch that were resolved, and 247 of those were feature requests. So I'm not going to cover all 247, um, but I'll hit on some of the high points, the things that you're most likely to notice from an end user perspective. So um, in the assignment tool, there's now a 24-hour reminder email, which will send a reminder to students. So this is an option. You do have to turn it on. There's a property associated with it. And once that property is enabled, then um, you get this little checkbox in the settings area of assignments. When you're setting it up, you can choose to send that reminder email. Um, another item in... Uh, in the assignments area as well is, is the UI for selecting groups and sections. So there's now been some improvements made there. You can do sort of this multiple select and it also allows you to filter. Um, so if you have a lot of groups in your course and maybe you want to filter by a keyword or, or a few letters that begin at the you know start of each group name, uh, it allows you to find those a lot easier if you have a very long list of sections. The same um, section uh, selection UI you'll see also in tests and quizzes a little bit later. Um, and also to do with groups, you can also filter the view of the assignment. So for the instructor, um, if you're going in and you have a long list of assignments available and you want to view just one group at a time, let's say, you can more easily um, filter those out in the user interface in the, the assignment listing page. There's also now a soft delete. So um, you'll see that there's a new tab over here called Removed Assignments. And if you decide to delete an assignment and then want to retrieve it, you can do that from within the interface. It's going to soft delete it initially, and it'll show up in this Removed Assignments tab. And then to restore it, you would simply check the box and restore that item. If you wanted to bring it back, you accidentally deleted it and, and wanted to um, recover it within the site. 
there is now a new empty state for gradebook. So um, before, if you went into gradebook without any students or any um, columns, you would just kind of get a blank screen. And a lot of uh, people were, were thrown by that a little bit because, you know, they didn't really, they didn't know if something was wrong with the tool or, you know, what to do once they got there. So now there's a, um, some indicators to let you know that there's no gradebook items and there's no students. So you don't just see this blank screen. Um, you kind of get an indication of what you're supposed to do next. Um, so in this one, it's showing both students and gradebook items empty. In this other one, you see that we have some students, but no items. So again, it just prompts you to, to either add gradebook items or um, enroll some students in order to see those columns and, uh, and rows in, in the spreadsheet view. Also in the gradebook, um, when you create a new gradebook item, there's the create and add another option. So instead of having to create an item and then go back to kind of that initial screen where you go add an item and then walk through all of those steps, if you click this little plus sign next to the create button, it will um, save the item that you're currently creating and immediately take you back to the same dialog to add the next one. So it just, it's fewer clicks um, if you're adding multiple things and in a quick sequence. There also in the grade book is a way to exclude um, or excuse a grade. So for example, if a student has some sort of, you know, um, grade that you want to be able to just kind of wipe clean, maybe they've got a, a you know, excused um, test or something, or um, you just want to remove that from their grade calculation, essentially, you can go to the cell that contains that grade for that student. And in the drop down menu, you'll see this excuse or include grade. So if you excuse it, um, and it'll show up with a strike through. And then if later you wanted to add it back in, you could choose to include it again. Um, so that, that allows you to, to do that and on an individual student basis as opposed to a whole gradebook item for the whole class. Another thing that's new in 19 um, is an easier import from Gradebook Classic. Uh, I couldn't show you an image on this one because it's kind of hard to uh, picture uh, the import process <laughs> without going through the whole thing. So um, just know that it's easier <laughs> if, um, if you're bringing over a, a course from a prior semester. Um, in 12, you had to have Gradebook Classic available on both sites in order to roll the Gradebook over. And then you could activate um, the new Gradebook or Gradebook NG um, and transition all of that data into the new tool. Now you don't need to do that. So if you're copying a site from a prior term, you don't need to have Classic available in both sites. You can just import it, it will pick up whichever iteration of gradebook you have and put it into the one that is in that uh, new site. So you'll, it'll automatically put it into the new gradebook format. Another thing that's new in 19 is the LTI 1.3 or LTI Advantage certification. Um, this is the latest specification from IMS Global, and it is sort of the, the standard for external apps. So all of the uh, third party vendors, this is kind of uh, where things are going in that space. Um, there's still not a, a lot of tools written specifically for 1.3 Advantage, um, but that's where they're sort of shooting for. So it allows a much deeper integration with the LMS and it allows those external tools to work and feel a lot more like a, a native tool because they have deeper um, links within the LMS. So, um, so that uh, Sakai was one of the first few, uh, I think we were one of the first four uh, LMSs to be officially certified for LTI 1.3 also known as LTI Advantage. Um, in the overview 
tool. This is the sort of landing page when you go to a course. Um, this now can be managed by the instructor. So you can choose which widgets you want to show on this page. You can go into manage and move these around or remove certain ones from the page um, if you don't want them to appear on that course landing page. So it just gives the um, instructor a little more control right from the UI without having to kind of go in as an administrator from the um, sites area to, to modify those things. In the resources tool, there is now um, the option to put a custom copyright um, message. So when you go in to upload a resource, you'll see this drop down menu now contains an item that says use copyright below and then it gives you a text box if you select that option where you can type in any specific copyright information that you want to associate with a particular resource. So it just gives the course designer a little bit more flexibility when uploading things to be able to tag them with the appropriate copyright. In the roster tool, there is a new card layout and um, um, a picture is, is shown here. It just sort of shows all of the users in a site in sort of a, a card fashion. Um, you still have the other views, the, the picture view and the list view, uh, but the, the card view is, I believe, the default that comes up um, and it, it shows um, the user's photo if there is one associated with the profile as well as some um, initial information and then you can click into the profile to view more information if available um, but that's a new view that's available in the roster tool the big news for Sakai 19 was the addition of the rubrics tool. This is a brand new tool and it integrates with assignments, gradebook, tests and quizzes, and forums. And there's also a new, you'll see in the in the tool menu on the left, when you add your set of tools for a given course, you can choose the rubrics tool and you'll, you'll end up with a manage rubrics tool for the instructor. And that's where you would go to create and share rubrics. So you can create um, rubrics for your own course and you can also share them with other instructors at the same institution so once you share them they're shared for anyone else on the system with instructor um, editing rights they can copy that shared rubric to use in their particular course um, so the uh, the rubrics that you put out there, um, you can also um, modify locally, but you don't modify the shared ones. Those have to be copied into an individual site before it will actually let you make changes to it. Um, and then once you attach a rubric to an item like a uh, assignment, a gradebook item, a, a forum topic, uh, what have you, you can then click and highlight the cells for the specific criteria and it will update the grade based on the points that you've set up when you created the rubric. So it just makes a clickable grading rubric that um, it allows you to more quickly and, and easily provide feedback and also help um, keep grading more consistent because you can use the same rubric for all um, assignments of a given type. In tests and quizzes, that uh, landing page also saw quite a bit of redesign. There's a new UI in the landing page which combines the working and the published assessments into one list. Um, this is sort of what it looks like here. And the idea was to make it more consistent with the way the assignment tool looks and feels. So you'll see that the, um, the columns and the overall layout is uh, a little more consistent with what you would find in the assignment tool. Um, if you go to the add tab, you'll still get the traditional, you know, create assignment, um, create through markup, import, all of those options are still there. They're just moved to a different area. And, um, and you can uh, filter. So if you only want to view the published ones, you don't want to view your draft assignments, you can use this filter at the top to um, quickly filter out the ones that you're not interested in at the moment. 
Um, there is also a search functionality to help you more quickly find a given assessment if you have a long list of items and this UI is fully responsive so it will um, display nicely on any size device whether that's a computer you know desktop computer or a tablet or an iPhone or um, some other type of smartphone. Also in tests and quizzes, as I mentioned with the assignment area in the setup screen, um, you have a little bit easier time searching for groups um, because it does give you this updated um, UI for selecting and searching for groups in a course. There was also a JSF upgrade conducted um, on the following tools, the chat tool, tests and quizzes tool, and the forums tool. Um, and we actually used the conference funds from the Sakai Virtual Conference the prior year, which was um, uh, the the 2017 conference funds were used for the JSF upgrade. And um, the idea here was to reduce technical debt because uh, the version of JSF that was in use in these particular tools was a little bit dated. It was um, you know, needing an upgrade because uh, it, it's going to make it a lot harder to maintain if you keep those older technologies in there. So, um, so we wanted to bring that a little bit more up to speed as far as the version, and that has the side benefit of making it easier to add new features and, and functionality going forward because the newer versions um, of the code support easier and more modern types of um, features. So, so that was completed on all of those tools in uh, prior to the, the 19 release. So that was it for Sakai 19. Now I'm going to move into Sakai 20. So again, just to recap before I switch gears, everything we've seen to date is available right now. It's out there. You can download it, run it. It's good to go. Um, everything I'm going to show you from this point on is come in the upcoming version. So Sakai 20 um, is currently in development and we've already had the feature freeze and the branch was cut actually um, early last week on November 4th. Um, so we're targeting um, to have the, the .o version, um, you'll see that here, uh, in March, because that would sort of line up with the, the annual release cycle that we're trying to keep going. The last two releases of Sakai have been a year apart. We released them both in March. So we're shooting for a March release for 20 as well. And um, that means we would have a release candidate. That's the RCO1 uh, available for testing sometime in December, we're, we're looking at you know right before the holidays, um, and then a second release candidate sometime in late January. A final release candidate, we usually go through at least three in the testing and QA cycle, so that would happen around the middle of February, uh, and then a, a you know, general availability release in March. Um, and then a lot of folks like to wait until the dot one release comes out because there's a, tends to be more bug fixes and, um, you know, things that people find when they they use the, the dot O version um, for, you know, just a little bit, things always surface in production that you don't find in testing. So uh, a lot of those bug fixes will come in pretty quickly and we're hoping to have that dot one release out in May, early May, so that people have a ample opportunity to install and test Sakai 20 over the summer if they're planning on upgrading in the fall. Um, so that's pretty a typical pattern for a lot of institutions is to do that sort of testing um, uh, over the summer term tends to be a little bit lighter term and then um, go ahead and, and upgrade prior to the fall term. Um, so hopefully uh, we'll stick to those target dates. They could shift. Um, so these are just tentative and right now it, it's always um, 
you know, subject to change depending on how things work out, but that's sort of the plan currently. And in terms of the issues um, that have currently been uh, addressed in Sakai 20, right now to date there have been 1,181 uh, issues resolved and 171 of those were feature requests. Um, so now we're going to take a look at some of those feature requests and um, and you'll see there's a lot of new stuff in 20 that's pretty exciting. So um, so that's what we'll be transitioning to in the, uh, the rest of the presentation. So um, one of the new things in Sakai is the new default gateway. Um, so this is actually an animated GIF um, that came off of Jira. I pasted the link to the slide deck in the chat. So if you want to view the little um, quick little movie that that shows you what this looks like um, you can go to that link and view the actual slides um, if you go to that slide you'll you'll be able to see it it should autoplay uh, but basically the default gateway page hadn't seen a lot of love in a very long time it was it was quite dated the information that was there so um, so that got a refresh now a lot of institutions have their own custom gateway so you don't really see this a lot unless you're downloading kind of the vanilla version of Sakai but for people that are are you know, LMS shopping or they're um, looking to implement a new um, implementation of Sakai, the default gateway has been updated um, to be much more modern and much nicer than um, the, what was there previously. So you'll see that the information there has on the features and the acknowledgements um, tabs over here have all been updated to, um, to more current information. Within Sakai itself, the avatar, the um, in default avatar that shows up um, will have a new more modern look. So you'll see that the old one was sort of this, um, you know, stick person uh, looking if, if there was no picture. And the new one is more of a Google inspired um, little medallion with the, uh, the initial or, or initials of the person. Okay, sorry about that. Um, the uh, if, if there is a profile photo, the profile photo will take the place of the um, initials of the person. But um, right now, it is uh, is showing the initials because there is no photo for this person. So it just gives a more modern look there. There's now a search option that appears up in the global nav at the very top. So you'll see that right next to the, um, the view site as drop down if you're an instructor or the bullhorns if you're um, a student or an admin, you'll see a, a little search um, hour, or magnifying glass. And if you um, select that, you can type in a search term and it will search across a user's sites. So that's been moved up into that global area uh, of the portal. The bullhorns um, also, I, this was actually new, bullhorns were new in 12, but they were turned off by default because there were still uh, quite a few tools that didn't write to bullhorns, didn't generate alerts there. Now we're still adding alerts, so um, it doesn't have complete coverage, but there was some, um, confusion over the two different types of bullhorns. There were social bullhorns and academic bullhorns and people weren't quite sure which alerts went into which bucket. So what we've done um, in 19, or I'm sorry, in 20 is combine those two. So in 20, there's only one bullhorn and, um, and it looks like this. This is the bullhorn icon, but it's going to combine both the social and the academic alerts into one area. Uh, it just seems to make a little more sense for end users to do it that way. Uh, also in the profile tool in 20 there's a new name pronunciation feature um, and this way students can record how they pronounce their own name and the instructor when um, 
he or she views the student profile, they can play those back so that they know when they're calling on a student that they're pronouncing the name correctly. So it just helps uh, add a little bit of personal touch there so that uh, people can um, indicate how they prefer to uh, have their name pronounced. And in assignments, also to do with the profile, the, the profile photo has been surfaced in the assignment tool. So you'll see here that the student photo shows up as a little medallion next to the information about the student submission. Um, if there is no photo, again, you would see that medallion with the initial instead of the photo. And um, also, incidentally, if it's an anonymous grading scenario, it would not show the pictures. So um, the pictures are hidden if it's an anonymous uh, grading for a particular assignment. But um, otherwise, they do show up. And it just helps um, kind of put a name with a face, um, particularly for online programs where um, you only get to know students online, it can sometimes be helpful to see their photo in different places to begin to make those associations. Also in assignments, there is a new progress bar when students submit. Um, so as they go through the submission process, you'll see that each of these states here becomes highlighted as the student goes through the process. So when they first have a draft, it shows that they're in this stage. Um, once they've submitted, it shows up highlighted. If they've resubmitted, that would also display. And then once it's been returned, this last part of the, the progress bar becomes highlighted. So, um, so that kind of helps to clarify the student's um, progress through the entire process of submitting an assignment. In the users tool, this is an admin tool, so end users won't really see this, but for any of you Sakai admins out there, you will notice that the um, the UI for this has been updated a little bit. And this is another one of those animated GIFs that you can view in the actual slide deck. Um, and it'll just kind of show you what it does. But it, it basically kind of error proofs you as you type for some of these things. And it'll let you know if, um, you know, if, if it's a valid email and that sort of thing. So, um, so that will update as you go. My next slide seems to be having difficulty loading. Uh, oh, there you go. OK, so the statistics tool has a new user activity tab. So you'll see that next to the report tab, there's a new tab that shows up called user activity. And what that does is it allows you to choose a user from the drop down. It'll show you all of the people enrolled in the course. And then it'll give you a much more granular um, listing of the activity from that user and you can pr provide a date range you know when do you want to see their activity but it will also give you more information so for example um, it'll say show more if there are additional details available um, like here I know that this person read a lesson builder page but if I click show more it'll tell me the name of the page so I'll see that that was week one um, or tests and quizzes, if I choose to show more there, it will uh, let me know which test or quiz uh, was actually submitted. And um, students also get a view of the statistics tool. Students are able to view their own activity within a course. So they now can see their own visits, um, their average time on the site, um, and uh, you know the average presence per visit. So they just get a little window into their own activity. They obviously can't see anyone else's information. Um, but it provides a, a student uh, dashboard, if you will, of their own visits to a particular site. It doesn't give them quite as much detail as the instructor, but gives them an idea of how much time they're spending. In the tests and quizzes tool, this is a new one that um, was made popular by that new UI of, uh, that was redesigned for, for 19 um, with the draft and the working copy in the same screen, um, a lot of people uh, were deleting their drafts by mistake. So there's now a restore assessment option similar to the restore assignment 
option um, in the assignment tool. So you can go into that tab to restore a deleted assessment and um, retrieve it right within the UI. Okay, in the CK editor, there's um, been some templates that were contributed by University of Dayton, and these are now included by default in the CK editor template. So if you go into CK editor, that's our rich text editor throughout Sakai, and go to templates, you'll see that there's a selection here, and these were, again, the ones that um, the CK, that uh, UDayton had contributed. Um, and you can uh, select any of these to sort of modify the um, default layout for a, a particular uh, piece of content. Um, so those are now available in the CK editor anywhere it appears throughout the course. In the gradebook, there's a new section column. So if you have multiple sections and you want to be able to see that information persistently throughout the um, you know, whole time that you're viewing the gradebook as opposed to filtering for or searching for a particular section, you can you now have a column in there that will give you that information. Um, there is also the option to um, suggest previous inputs, and this is another one of those little animated GIFs. I recommend you view the slide deck to actually see how it works, but um, if you go into the gradebook, let's say, and do the add comment um, to type in a comment, when you begin typing, it will pick up the first few letters and suggest um, the you know something that you've typed previously. So if you've added the comment, good work on several students, let's say, when you go in and start typing and you, st and you type G-O, it's gonna detect that there was another comment that started with G-O and it'll suggest the rest of it to you. So just sh saves you a little bit of typing if you've um, got certain comments that you tend to use quite a bit, it will um, allow you to select those and add them in a little bit easier. And there is now a full screen mode in the gradebook. Um, one thing that uh, a lot of folks expressed was a feeling of, of not having enough real estate in the gradebook to be able to, you know, scroll through all of the, the various columns and students. And, um, and there were a lot of people expressing a, a desire to be able to make it bigger. So now there's this little icon over in the side and you'll see it's an, it's kind of an expanded or contracted state. Right now this is in full screen view. So it has taken over all of the Sakai navigation. It's temporarily hidden that. Um, um, if I were to click that button to collapse it, then it would you would see the the global navigation at the top and the tool menu on the side um, as usual, and this would go back into the content frame. Um, but it just gives you a little more real estate as you're working with the gradebook if you want it to kind of expand out to fill the entire screen. Also to do with you know, making the, the screen a little more reader friendly if you've got lots of stuff in your gradebook is the ability to resize gradebook columns. And this does need to be turned on with a property. There's a gradebook property that you'll need to enable on the server. Once you do that, it allows you to have these little drag bars next to um, the edges of columns so that you can make them uh, larger or smaller depending on how big they need to be to, um, to view the entire uh, title of a given column or to make it a little bit smaller if, um, if maybe it's a really short title. Also, and this one is super new, this got in right under the wire for the code freeze, uh, is the ability to message students from the gradebook. So um, you may have seen this in other LMS systems. This is a similar kind of thing. If you go into the gradebook and you go to the drop down menu for a given column, you'll now see that there's a message students link in that uh, drop down menu. And if you select it, then you'll get this um, little pop up window which allows you to select the students that you want to send the message to, either ungraded students or graded students in this case. We will be adding some additional options to that drop down menu, but for the first iteration, that's, um, that's all we could uh, get in there quickly. 
once you select uh, which group of students you want, then you have an opportunity to type your message um, and you know give it a subject and go ahead and send it right from the gradebook area. The podcast tool was revamped. So the UI, and this is the old UI up here. I realize it's a little bit small on the slide, um, but these were the, the images that I grabbed from JIRA, so I, I couldn't really make them too much bigger without making them blurry. Um, but the, the old UI was basically just kind of a big block of text, not uh, very easy to, to read or not terribly pretty on the screen. Um, so it's been revamped a little bit to have um, sort of a tabular layout that separates the different elements out. Um, so it's a little easier to read and um, parse the information visually. You can also um, copy to the clipboard and things like that from here. And there is now a new um, to the top button that, uh, or quick button to, to move back up to the top of the screen. So um, some pages in Sakai may be quite long if you're all the way at the bottom of a settings page or some other page where you've scrolled down quite a bit. Now there's a quick way to jump back up to the top. So that's a new feature that you can look forward to in 20. Another new thing in 20 is the OneDrive Google Drive integration. Um, and this actually integrates with the Sakai file picker. So when you go to attach a file anywhere within the system, um, you have the opportunity to um, go to either the OneDrive tab or the Google tab, and you can uh, configure those the first time you go in. It'll ask for your account information um, in Google or, or um, your OneDrive account. And once you've linked it up with your user account, then it will show you any documents in that cloud storage drive. And you can select any of those and either attach a copy or attach a link to the original document. So, um, so that makes it really easy to pull in those resources from those external cloud storage um, repositories. In site info, there's now a new date management functionality. Um, this was yet another one of those uh, GIFs, animated GIFs that show you the, the um, sequence of events. So unfortunately, this isn't the best screen grab because it's not the, um, the animated one. But I, I, again, I encourage you to go to the slide deck link and, um, and check this one out. But basically what it does is it allows you to, to um, view and update all of the dates for anything that has a date, uh, due date, in, in the whole site in one place. So all of your assignments, all of your tests and quizzes, all of your lesson pages, um, they're all grouped in there. And you can go and view all of the due dates and change them in one screen so that you don't have to go into, you know, five different tools and go into each individual item to change those dates. You can do it all in one place. Um, so that's something that um, the people have been asking for for a while. So we're very happy to announce that that's made it into 20. Now, currently, it's an, um, a manual date change. So you do have to go in manually and change those dates. But um, we hope to add shortly thereafter. Uh, I don't know if it'll make it into a dot release or not, but we hope to add the option to um, have an auto date where you can tell it to move those dates forward, you know, given number of, of days um, and update them all for you. But that's a future piece of development that's not currently in 20. Right now you just have the ability to update all of the items in one place. Another pretty exciting thing um, that's coming in 20 is what we've been calling the Sakai Grader. Now we've started in the assignment tool with this and we'll be branching out to other tools. Um, but the Sakai Grader, uh, and it works with rubrics, you'll see that it, this particular assignment had a rubric with it. And I, if you click on the little um, rubric icon, it will open up the rubric on top and you can move it around. It's a, a pop-up window that can be moved around to so that it doesn't 
obscure the student submission behind it. But the idea is that it shows the student submission over here on the left, and then there's a grading pane on the right, and you have the opportunity to add feedback. Um, you can add attachments still, and there's also a private note option where you can add notes that are private to the instructor. The students don't see it. So you can add notes for yourself or for other instructors if it's something where there's more than one person that um, is and it has instructor access in a course. And um, it will also, if you have multiple things here, you can click to view submitted text or file attachments and it'll preview them for you over here on the side. Um, now, uh, the doc preview uh, is not currently in, but it is planned for the dot O release. So if there's a file attachment, for example, a Word file, when you preview that, submission in the grader, it will actually display the student's file for you over here on the, um, the area for the student information, and you can preview it without downloading it. Um, in a future release, we hope to have annotation so that you can annotate on top of that submission. Annotation is not planned for 20, but we hope to have it in there for 21. Um, for 20, though, the document preview is definitely um, on the on the you know, targeted list of, of things to be available for the, the 20 release. And this is just a visualization of what the annotation might look like. Again, it's not done at this point. It is a future development project. Um, but you will be able to highlight and comment um, directly on the student submission once we get that um, added into the, the greater proce process. All right, so those are all of the new features. And um, as I mentioned, there are quite a few of them. So um, if you guys have any questions about either version, um, please feel free to, to you know, type those into the chat or come on the microphone. Wilma, thanks so much. I can see someone typing already. Feel free to use the mic also. Questions, comments, or your own priorities? What are you most looking forward to? No questions? I saw Sean starting to type, but... Hey, Wilma, can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, thanks. Um, qu real quick question. Um, you know that that piece that you had about regarding the uh, the change of the, uh, the the landing page or the uh, what did you call it? The um, uh, I forget what you called it. You know how it, it was redone. The, the the landing page hasn't been redone in a long time. Mm -hmm. and is that something that that's going to be an option? That's going to be an option, I assume. Because I customize our landing page. Yeah, you're talking about the, the default gateway? The default gateway, yes, sorry. Yeah, yeah. if you already have a custom gateway, it's not going to really affect you at all. Okay. Um, it's only for people that are sort of starting with a blank install. They don't okay. have a gateway yet. Um, I, or if someone's just evaluating it on Nightly, let's say, they go to Nightly and they see kind of the vanilla out-of-the-box version of Sakai, they'll yeah. see the default gateway there. Okay. Yeah, I, I saw that the other day at the virtual conference, but I didn't get a chance to comment on that. I was just curious. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank no you. No problem. Any other questions or comments or what are you looking forward to most in 20? I'm 
Okay, I see a comment from or question from Dave O. In 20, you showed the message from Gradebook. Is that an email that gets sent? Yes, it sends it via the email tool. Well, if there are no more questions, thanks very much for attending. Wilma, thanks for uh, an expert presentation that gave us loads of detail. You can catch this webinar again in the Aperio YouTube channel. Um, it'll be up there in a couple of days if you missed any of the detail or want to review it. So thanks again and see you soon. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.